So just as Howard says, this means the circulating supply on the XRP ledger will be reduced in order to create the supply on the new chain. So overall, for the XRP ledger, an increase of transactions, issued assets, side chains that require XRP, the original XRP from the circulating supply, a required amount of XRP for every single account, trading pairs, smart contracts, and apps, they all demand XRP. What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update, let's kick it off. All right, hope everyone's doing well. In today's video, we're going to start things off looking at crypto bear markets over the past 10 years. These bear markets can last for hundreds, if not over a thousand days, and every single time it works the retail investor because of current price being at lows or even trending downwards. The crypto asset class is cyclical. All of this moves in cycles. There's bear markets, there's bull markets. So I marked up the Bitcoin monthly price chart as we can see here from its all time high until it creates a new high. Notice each cycle one, two and three, it has created a new all time high. The monthly RSI pierces over 70 into overbought right there. And to keep it simple, the RSI simply measures momentum. And this momentum indicator measures the magnitude of different price changes. So it averages the gains and losses over a specified period and plots it. And every single bear market is absolutely brutal. There's no way to sugarcoat it. For me, this is without a doubt the most difficult bear market I've ever endured specifically for the altcoin market. So in this bear market in 2012, from the previous high, it lasted 611 days. The following cycle from 2013 to 2017 lasted over 1,200 days. Our last full bear market almost lasted 1,100 days. And these bear markets typically last just long enough for us to question our sanity. There's a variety of times we've seen when Bitcoin starts recovering, we say this is it, and then it creates another low. And these bear markets and price crashes affect retail emotions massively. They happen because they work. Until a good chunk of them say there will never be a bull run after a few hundred days being exhausted, they said there will never be another bull run towards the lows. We retraced. Once we crashed again, they said, see, I told you there will never be another bull run. And in hindsight, that was March 2020, the bottom of the market before Bitcoin not only recovered from that low to an all-time high price and did over a 15x. Where other alts actually performed way better than Bitcoin, as we can see DAG in 2021 alone from January all the way up until August did over a 70x return. And whether we use this first high in April where the RSI was at an all-time high or the all-time high of 69k for Bitcoin where the RSI was down and we had bearish divergence, we're well into this bear market. We have the Bitcoin having less than 8 months away in April. Whether or not you believe that has an effect on price, historically it has. And a lot of people are saying crypto is dead. Crypto is not dead. Maybe some scam coins, meme coins, and other projects that don't have proper utility or funding are dead, but crypto, the asset class, is far from dead. And not financial advice, just my personal belief is that Bitcoin in due time creates another all-time high price. Whether the Bitcoin price chart wakes up before or after the halving, it's coming. Whether you think Bitcoin could do another sweep of the lows or create one more low, it's still coming. And try to keep an open mind and remember that anything is possible in crypto, both pumps and dumps. I just tweeted this out emphasizing the future global economy will be tokenized, it will be more transparent, secure, have better liquidity because all of these systems can now be interoperable and interconnected. So blockchain 1 was Bitcoin back in 2009 when it first launched. Blockchain 2 was Ethereum, essentially Bitcoin with added features and smart contract enabled so you can program if-then statements, business logic with transactions. So you can build applications on top of Ethereum that are dApps or decentralized applications. Now what's the benefit of running a dApp rather than just a centralized application? Well for starters, there's no central point of failure which is absolutely key. And these dApps running on a decentralized network give users more control over their data and their assets, along with improving cost efficiency, getting rid of all of these middlemen and disintermediation that is taking tons of fees and of course more time to process any type of transaction. And today we have Blockchain 3.0. This consists of permissioned and private networks such as Hyperledger, we could talk about R3's Corda, Quorum, etc. And also more efficient and better performing public networks than Ethereum such as Hedera, Casper, etc. So we have some open permissionless networks in the crypto asset class. We also have enterprises and different consortiums creating permission networks and frameworks. But I believe the biggest opportunity will be Blockchain 4.0, the case for hybrid networks and interoperability between all of these systems because each have pros and cons. So Blockchain 4.0 would be a combination between both of these private frameworks and permission frameworks like Hyperledger Fabric with public networks that can provide the best of both worlds. Connectivity and interoperability solutions for Quant and Overledger, its OS, are absolutely key. And believe it or not, we are seeing public crypto networks that you can go through the list on CoinMarketCap connecting to these permission private networks as well for better security, for better liquidity, and a second audit trail. Now let's speed through a few key points here for Casper, then we'll dive into XRP. 
I'm paying attention to a variety of utility projects that have ample funding and enterprise run rate. They have revenue today and they show no signs of disappearing anytime soon. An obvious alt that fit into this category would be XRP, HBAR, Casper, and more. Casper Labs is SOC 2 compliant. They're on the verge of reaching SOC 2 Type 2 compliance. When this happens, Casper Labs will be the only blockchain organization to hold this designation. As we've shown previously, Casper Labs, Casper Association was speaking alongside Meta, HSBC, State Street, Tech Mahindra, Siemens, and more. Now we know the public Casper network will be used to secure 25 million upgradable patent NFTs or dynamic NFTs initially. The total value of these patents together is 7 to 10 billion. Companies including Nike, Toshiba, and Coke Industries. So patents are valued or estimated to be 30% of the S&P 500's market value. The S&P 500 is valued at over 36 trillion. So this is an example of IBM choosing Casper out of any other L1 that they work with because of their specific account and contract permissioning. These NFTs are truly upgradable. Other networks might try to say they have upgradable NFTs, but it is not upgradable infrastructure. So this patent solution is specifically using a permission distributed ledger of open source Hyperledger Fabric, which is private, and the public Casper network to securely store verified public and private information about each patent. And this type of integration is enabling Casper to securely bring assets that are locked on a private ledger to the public chain. So as we know, CSPR is the native token on Casper's blockchain. This is a gas token or utility token. Every single transaction on Casper's public network requires Casper for gas. So every single transaction that is secured on the public network for deploying the patents, updating the patent owners, and updating the metadata within the NFTs if anything changes, and new information, even selling and trading patents or putting them into a bundle, mortgaging patents, patent valuations, legal footprint, product footprint, and any other type of documentation that needs to be secured to the public network. And the amount of gas or the amount of Casper required for each transaction is determined by how much code is executed on the blockchain. The more complex the transaction, the more information in that code in that deployment, the more Casper the token is required. And we've spoken about Web 1, 2, and 3, but Web 2.5 is also crucial. This is the infrastructure or the bridge layer between 2 to 3. And this is a main reason that Gartner listed Casper Labs as a sample vendor in this emerging category for open source software. And you can find all of this on Casper's public network right now. So blockchain 4.0, leveraging public networks and connected to these private and permission networks is going to be huge. This is how you get enterprise adoption. Enterprises, unfortunately, don't want to just go leverage directly a public network. And there's several enterprise plays that are going after enterprise and government adoption, the largest and most untapped market in the world. And Casper leverages WebAssembly or WASM, so this interpreter allows any programming language which compiles to WASM, essentially every language, to become a smart contract language for Casper. So unlike Ethereum, you don't have to force your entire IT department to learn Solidity or any other type of programming language. They can use existing languages. 40 high-level programming languages support WASM today. C, C++, Python, Go, Rust, Java, and more. And massive companies use Wasm today. Between Amazon, Tesla uses it for their car software. Google uses it for Google Maps, Google Translate, Google Docs, Visa for payment processing and credits and accounts, Netflix, Samsung with their applications, etc. And enterprises are and will adopt public crypto networks today. But what we're seeing is it's not going to be direct due to concerns around privacy and regulatory requirements. And because of this, Casper Labs team understands this. They come from Microsoft, Google, Adobe, etc. It's a permissionless public framework that's open, allowing users to choose between public, private, and hybrid setups, specifically built for private and hybrid deployments for enterprise adoption. So we've spoken about WiseKey Casper Labs before with supply chain management, connecting IoT devices and satellites to track goods on Casper's blockchain. So all the information of the goods, the logistics, the temperature, all of that can be tracked on the network. And WiseSat actually launched with SpaceX, enabling the direct connection of satellites to IoT devices. WiseKey will soon have so many satellites in orbit that data from IoT devices anywhere on Earth can be saved and protected on blockchain. Your IoT devices would trigger and let you know if the box has been tampered with, if it's been opened, if it reaches the wrong temperature, and all this data is stored on Casper's blockchain. Okay, now let's dive into XRP, the XRP price chart, and specifically discuss volume and what's needed for an all-time high price. For this example, we're going to look at coin market cap across the board for its 24-hour volume. 
And you can do the same thing with any other website that provides volume metrics if you don't think that CMC is the most accurate. But what we're going to do is compare the volume today under 1,984,000,000 in 24 hour trade volume and compare to the volume that it was during its high when it did that 3x in 2021. So the 24 hour trade volume today, money flowing through XRP on a daily basis is under $1 billion at 984,000,000. During the week of April 11th, XRP's trade volume when it was trading over $1.30, today it's under $1 billion. It was over $21 billion, so over 21 times from today. Now you could argue that some of this volume is not the most accurate, but we're just comparing the numbers from April 2021 to today. There is a lot of wash trading as well, so that could be accounting for this number. And during this time, we can see the volume absolutely skyrocketing, and this resulted in a 219% move or a 3.19x return. During this time, XRP went from the low 60 cents to about $1.96. So my personal bet is whenever XRP creates a new all-time high price, the volume is going to be higher than that previous level. Meaning in future bull runs, when we have massive amounts of volume, trading volume, and liquidity, that is when alts have an opportunity to run. Typically, high amounts of trade volume can precede a large price move. So we have a bunch of news with XRP related to the automated market maker. Whenever that goes live, I for one will be participating. I encourage a lot of people to participate and you don't have to bet the farm. But if every single XRP holder, every person in the XRP community took a few hundred dollars worth of XRP and put it into the automated market maker, that could be huge demand for XRP and that is completely outside of Ripple. You can also talk about Zahau, X-A-H-A-U, I believe, and this is going to be a smart contract sidechain of the XRP ledger that uses XRP. Not a new XRP, not a separate token, the original XRP, so additional demand. And recently, I've seen some comments of people saying the XRP ledger will be widely adopted, but XRP won't appreciate in price, and it seems like the bear market after hundreds of days is affecting retail like always. As liquidity, connectivity, and development grow on the XRP ledger, XRP will likely appreciate too. And why would that be? Well, for each XRP ledger account, they have to have a base reserve of 10 XRP. So every single account requires 10 XRP in that wallet. There's also owner reserves if you have other things. And it requires XRP if you hold NFTs, trust lines for escrow, payment channels, etc. So bottom line, the more accounts that are created on the XRP ledger, even if they don't hold a bunch of XRP, requires XRP. The escrow function and payment channels only work with XRP. And as we know, there is a minimum transaction cost required for a standard transaction on XRP equivalent to 10 drops. And no, this isn't meant to pump up the price. You have to have some type of fee on the network. And this protects the network from being disrupted by spam or suffering a DDoS attack. So each transaction must destroy a fraction or a small amount of XRP. So thus far, and you can see this number live on XRP scan, over 11.5 million XRP have been permanently burned. They'll never return. So there's a finite supply of XRP. The XRP ledger was also the first blockchain to feature a built-in decentralized exchange. The DEX has cool features such as auto-bridging, using XRP between two tokens for trading when it is cheaper than directly trading token to token, and also pathfinding. And another fun fact, the XRP ledger was the first blockchain to support tokenization. So all assets on the XRP ledger can be represented as tokens, often called issued assets or IOUs. Now IOUs is not the best term for certain things that are tokenized, but it can work for some. These can be stable coins like we've seen, stocks, real estate, commodities, art, anything can be tokenized. And standard tokens are tracked via trust lines, and to issue a trust line, this requires some XRP, so additional demand. So bottom line, I'm 100% participating using the AMM on the XRPL when it goes live to earn yield with my XRP holdings. I want to try it, I want to contribute, and I'm excited. We also have hooks adding smart contract functionality to the XRP ledger. So versus Ethereum, a smart contract enabled platform, XRP, the asset in the XRP ledger is a huge payments network. It's built differently initially for cross-border payments, but it's fit to do anything. The XRP ledger can truly transact any type of value. So we have shared by Wojcik, he's an XRP ledger and Evernote developer. This new smart contract sidechain is connected to XRP and XRP is the native asset. It's not creating new XRP, what it's doing is leveraging the existing XRP in circulation. This will introduce a unique line of features, applications, and opportunities to grow that are practically non-existent on the XRP ledger as a payments network. With these hooks, developers are now able to build and deploy a variety of products and features. And Evernode will be launching right after the network, so Evernode is a layer 2 smart contract solution that is super flexible and powerful. The dApps are able to interact with off-chain systems, it can compute, store, and provide anything. So just as Howard says, this means the circulating supply on the XRP ledger will be reduced in order to create the supply on the new chain. 
So overall, for the XRP ledger, an increase of transactions issued as that side chains that require XRP, the original XRP from the circulating supply, a required amount of XRP for every single account, trading pairs, smart contracts, and apps, they all demand XRP. If you follow XRPL Labs, you can find this on Twitter and read this new white paper for Zahao Network. They'll support multiple chains that use the XRP Ledger protocol and our commitment to the main XRP Ledger remains steadfast. This white paper was published two days ago and it's available on GitHub. Zahao will be linked to the XRP Ledger via a one-way burn to mint liquidity portal that allows users to clone their XRP Ledger account address on Zahao. You can burn the XRP that you have on the XRP Ledger mainnet in return for a matching number of the Zahao XRP. It looks very similar to the XRP Ledger. They have a DEX. They have a burn mechanism. And the best part is they'll have hooks for smart contracts and business logic that will likely attract a lot more developers and applications. And to finish up today's video, we have iTrust Capital linked in the top of this YouTube video description and in the pinned comment. I've been using iTrust Capital for over three years and they're valued at over $1 billion for tax-free trading and investing, leveraging a Roth IRA. If you create a free account using the link below, you also get a $100 funding reward. They also have a big promotion right here where you can click to enter your email and name to win an all-expense paid trip to Los Angeles and VIP experience at the USC football game. The first place winner will receive two USC football VIP tickets, two airfare vouchers, $300 Uber service credit, food and drinks at the game, a two-night hotel stay, $400 gift card, iTrust Capital USC shirt, and a crypto Trojan hat. Second place will win an iPad Air, and third place will get a $200 gift card. There's been over 4,000 entries to enter. Use the link below, and I'll catch you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below, and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts, I'll catch you in the next one.